So now let's move on to one of the most uh, essential and basic uh, needs within a PBX, which would be extensions. So to do so, we will go to PBX, then extensions, and then we will go to the extensions module. This will be the module where you will be able to create all of your different extensions uh, within Vital PBX. Uh, we will see other ways that you can create extensions as well, uh, but this will be um, the general way where you will create your different extensions. So uh, let's uh, take a look into all of these fields by uh, populating them. So uh, first we will have the extension number field. So here we will enter the extension number. In this case, I'm using extension 2000. Then we will have the name. This will be the name for the person that will be as, uh, will, that will have this extension assigned to them. So in this case, I'm just calling this one boss. Uh, then we have the class of service. Uh, once again, we will be talking more about class of service uh, later on on the course. But right now, uh, this is where you will be able to assign uh, the class of service to this extension. Then we have the features password. The features password uh, is auto-populated uh, when you create it. So basically, if you just created your extension number and your name, um, this will be all that you need uh, to, to have an extension. You can just go ahead and click Save and, and have an extension created. The rest of the fields are populated automatically. Uh, but once again, we will go through every field so you will know uh, what each one of them do, what, it, what each one of them does. Um, so here is the features password. The features password uh, will be used uh, to... Uh, for, for various uh, different features. Uh, for example, this will be the one used in, uh, if you want to lock your phone and unlock it, uh, you will be asked for this uh, features password. Uh, if you're using hot desking, we will go through that in um, just one moment. This is the features password that will be asked for. Uh, so, as the name implies, features password is a password that is used within various uh, features. And users can change this features pa this features password um, directly through one of the feature codes. All right. So for simplicity, um, I will just go ahead and use one two three four just so I can easily remember uh, from my phone. But once again, you might want to use uh, some other type of nomenclature. Next, we have email addresses. Here we can enter the email address uh, of the person that. Um, that we wish to notify for different notifications related to this uh, extension. This can be um, voicemail to email. Uh, this can also be uh, fax to email. So um, by adding the email addresses here, uh, you will be able to notify uh, the email address. You might notice that I can input multiple email addresses here. Uh, now this is because of an extended feature. Um, uh, before moving on, extended features are features that are, are granted to um, to users that have um, registered uh, a license for at least one uh, commercial add-on, um, are using a licensing plan, or uh, have made a donation and have registered their donation with this installation. So, uh, if you remember on previous... Uh, um, lessons, we had the registration of a license. So that's why I have view license now here. So I have this licensing information. So by registering this license for the licensing plan, uh, this has unlocked um, the extended features. And once again, this can also be unlocked uh, if you purchase a single add-on uh, license, for example. It doesn't matter if it's the cheapest one or the most expensive one. Um, just by registering a, uh, a licensed add-on, you will have these extended features. So the first one we're looking at um, on this course is the uh, ability to have multiple uh, email addresses uh, for your extension. This way, you can have multiple people be notified um, by any, any notification that is related to this extension number. All right, so moving on. Next, we have the internal caller ID. Uh, this one can be left blank uh, since this will be the same as the extension number. But if you wish to change it, to change it, you can, you can have, um, you can have um, your name here, and then, 
enter the extension number. But once again, if you leave it blank, the extension number and the name is used here. Next, you have the external caller ID. Uh, this one can also be left blank now. And um, the external caller ID is the caller ID that is used whenever placing an external call, meaning through uh, a VoIP provider or, or PSTN, uh, in which you make a, an external call to the outside world. Uh, if you do not provide an external caller ID, be, keep in mind that your internal caller ID or, or your extension number is going to be used. Uh, but we will see further on, uh, on trunk configuration or outbound route configuration, that uh, you can override this, uh, um, uh, this caller ID. So in any case, I can just leave this here uh, with a... Um, Caller ID here, so I can use 1305560 just to give you an example of how external caller IDs can look like because you can also give uh, these caller IDs to each extension, for example. Then we have emergency caller ID, so this will this would be an uh, an emergency caller ID uh, that can be used when placing emergency uh, calls to any emergency number. Uh, we will take a look into that uh, a little bit later in the course. Uh, but for now, we can just leave uh, this blank. Uh, then we have account code. So account code is a special field. Um, it's mostly used for the CDR record. So account code uh, can allow you to filter your CDR uh, records to see uh, information just uh, with regards to a specific set of extensions. So let's say that you want to see um, extensions with, oops, sorry. Uh, you only want to see extensions with the account code two, for example. So you can filter uh, your CDR uh, records to only display extensions that have the account code two. So in this case, um, I'm gonna leave it blank. Um, I'm gonna use uh, an account code here. Uh, next up, we have language. So this will be the language that will be used for the voice prompts for the extension. So whenever they are accessing any feature um, on this extension or their voicemail, for example, um, they will have the um, the voice prompts be played back uh, in this specific language. So in this case, by default, it comes in English. Um, then we also have Spanish and French. Uh, later on in the course, we will take a look into how you can add more languages here. Um, but these are the default languages that come pre-installed in Vital PBX. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it in English. Now, you might have noticed that we have here in Vital PBX divided the um, extension uh, number section from the device section. Uh, this is because in Vital PBX you can have what is called uh, multi-device. Uh, which will allow you to have multiple devices associated to the same extension number. So here, on the device section, we can configure uh, our different devices. We will see um, in a, just a moment how you can add more, even more devices to the one that you're creating by default. Uh, but what we got here is that uh, we can have uh, as many devices of different technologies associated to this um, extension number. So. Let's take a look into devices and what they are. So devices would be uh, basically the means for your registration towards the PBX. So that's why we got here um, uh, information needed uh, to do that. So let's go field by field. First, we have the technology that we will be using. So you can choose between PJSIP, uh, SIP, IX2, and none. So uh, just in the case of none, uh, we will take a further look into this later on in the course, uh, but none would be used in the case where you want to create a virtual extension uh, that can be used for various features, um, including hot desking, which we will take a look at uh, later on in the course. So for now, we're going to create our PJSIP extension. Next, we have the user device. So this will be the username that will be used uh, to authenticate the registration uh, from your device to the PBX. So this user device, by default, it is populated with the extension number. 
Uh, but once again, uh, you can change it to whatever you want. So I can say this is uh, Joseph desktop phone. And I can use that as my registration username uh, perfectly. Uh, so it can be anything you want, either uh, letters or numbers, but no special symbols. So we will leave this as 2000, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, then we have the password field. So this will be the password used for registration. So uh, if we click this little uh, eye icon here, uh, you can see that we automatically generate a random password, um, which is uh, of high security just random set of letters and numbers and sometimes even uh, special characters. So here uh, we can uh, enter the type of password that we want to use. So I can call this one uh, boss um, desktop phone. And this will be a uh, the password that I will use for uh, registration. Or I can just call this one xnx2000. Uh, XX, anything that you like. But in any case, I will just leave it with the randomly generated password. All right, so next up, we have a device description. This will be a short description to recognize uh, this specific device. So once again, since you can have multiple devices, you can use this one uh, to, to know which device you're talking about. So I can call this one Buzz Desktop Phone. Uh, then we have the profile. We will be talking more about profiles later on in the course. Uh, but just uh, for now, this is where you will be able to uh, assign a specific device profile to uh, this device. Then, since we're creating a PJSIP uh, extension here, we got the Max Contacts uh, field which will be used to define how many contacts can register using this same user device and password. So I can call this one two, for example. Then we have codex. So here you can define the codex that you will be using for uh, this specific device. Uh, if you leave it blank, you will be using every single codec, but as you can see here, you can um, assign all of the specific codecs that you might want to use with this uh, device, just in case you want to select specific codex. Then we have DTMF mode. So this will be how the DTMF uh, signaling is sent through the um, through through this device. In this case, uh, by default, we're using RFC 4733 being the standard. But you can also choose between info, short info, in-band and auto. Uh, you can see a small description of what each one of these options is here on the tooltip as well as uh, below this video. Um, so next, we have emergency caller ID. So this has been an addition to Vital PBX version 3 and onward. Uh, where you can have an emergency caller ID uh, assigned directly on the device for your um, uh, for 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 your um, extension. Um, why why are we doing this? Uh, you will see this as well in hot desking, but uh, this way uh, the emergency caller ID is attached to your device instead of just your extension because your extension uh, can be changed or moved from locations um, probably. So we have added this emergency caller ID field. So you, your emergency caller ID is uh, directly attached to the device and the device is usually um, on a specific place um, uh, that you can assign a specific caller ID to. Uh, next up, we have dispatchable location. Once again, we will take a look into dispatchable locations uh, later on in the course, but this will be a specific uh, address that you can assign uh, in this case, to this device. Um, that way, uh, we will see later on, uh, this will work with emergency email notifications. So here you can assign uh, that different dispatchable locations you can create within Vital PBX. Next up, we have deny and permit. So these two fields uh, will allow you to uh, specify where... Um, the different uh, devices based on their IP address can register to this uh, device uh, for this extension. So uh, by having deny and permit with all zeros means that you can 
uh, register from any location. But let's say that I deny a specific uh, subnet, let's say 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This means that uh, if the IP address for the phone that is trying to connect uh, to this device uh, is uh, using this, uh, any IP address from this uh, subnet, uh, they will not be allowed to register. And the same thing, the same idea with permit, just the other way around. So if I enter um, a subnet here, only um, devices from this uh, specific subnet will be able to register with this device, using this device for this extension. All right, so, so this uh, just adds another layer of security. If you know the subnet from which uh, uh, phones will register from, um, you can specify that only from those subnets uh, they can register. All right, so uh, next up we have ring device. Once again, we can have multiple devices uh, for a single extension in Vital PBX. So uh, you can choose whether or not a specific device will ring. So for example, if you have multiple devices and you're located on the same, same general area, uh, you might not want all of the devices to ring at once. Uh, you can have uh, you can have the um, only a single device ring, and you will know that you can pick up that call from any of the devices on that same vicinity. And finally, we got two uh, other options here. Uh, these options only appear if you have the um, Vitsi server add-on installed. So these two features are related uh, to VT clients. So you can uh, choose whether or not you want to send push if you're using the mobile applications, for example, uh, which will allow for push notifications. And uh, whether or not this device is going to be used for a VTC client, uh, meaning it will be used for the VTC mobile uh, application or the VTC WebRTC uh, application, which is uh, VTC, Web, VTC WebRTC uh, is the application that you install uh, on Vital PBX. So for now, since this uh, extension is not a VTC client, I can leave this set to no. Okay, so this will be the general um, the general configurations for an extension. Uh, next up, we will take a look into into voicemail.